On question number one, you'll notice that it said each of the square represents one square foot. They asked for the answer in square yards. So if I take a look, this was one, two, three units. This was one, two, three, four units. In other words, there was 12 boxes here, 12 square feet. This was one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. This would have been fourteen times six. which would have been 84. And a lot of people are going to think that what I had to do is take 84 and add 12 to it and get 96. But that would have given me 96 square feet. It asked me for 90, how many square yards? And we have to remember that there are three feet in every one yard. So if I square these, there's nine square feet in every one yard squared, because three squared is nine. So I have to take that 96 and divide it by nine. If I do that, it's going to give me 10 and 2 thirds, which is why the correct answer for this is A. 10.666, if you put it in decimal form, the only answer then that would have made sense would have still been 10 and 2 thirds. Bless you. It says, now let the figure show a scale drawing of the park with the largest dimension equal to 63 meters. The largest dimension here was 14 units. So if I take those 14 units and I let that be equal to my 63 meters, they want to know what one unit would be equal to. So if I divide this by 14 to get one unit, I have to divide this also by 14 to find out how many meters it's going to be. When I take 63 and divide it by 14, it's going to give me 4.5, which is why B is the correct answer for number two. Are there questions on 1 and 2 and how I did the conversions? Okay, on number 2, I took the longest dimension, which was 14 units going across the bottom. They said that longest dimension was going to be equal to 63 meters. But when I look at any of the comparisons, they don't want 14 units. They want how many units? One. To convert this to one unit, I had to divide it by 14, which meant I had to take 63 and divide it by 14, which is where the 4.5 came from. Okay? Everybody good with one and two? Number three, this deals with the fact that two sides of a triangle their sum has to be greater than the third side. If I take a look, 25, 35, and even at all of these, I want to look for which one's the largest. 35 is the largest one of them all. So they're saying, what can I add to 25 that's going to get me bigger than 35? If I added 3, it'd give me 28. It's not larger. If I added 8, it'd give me 33. It's also not larger. If I added 6, it'd give me 31. It's also not larger. The only number that will work to make a triangle then is 11 because 25 plus 11 is 36, which is in fact bigger than 35. 
Number four is using the same rule. Here they gave me sides five and seven. This one they asked which one cannot make a triangle. Well, the first three that are there, seven is the largest number, or at least equal to the largest. Three plus five is bigger than seven, so it would make a triangle. Five plus five is bigger than seven, so it would make a triangle. Seven plus five is bigger than seven, so it would also make a triangle. When I get to this one, 12 is the largest number. Is five plus seven greater than 12? In fact, five plus seven is 12, and since they're equal, it's not greater. That's why D is the correct answer. You can't make a triangle unless the two sides are bigger than the third side. Three and four, same exact concept. Two sides have to be greater than the third side. Questions on three or four? Pretty good. Number five is a review question. A store sells towels for 25% off. When it says 25% off, am I going to be adding or subtracting? Subtracting. I normally pay for 100% of the item, but they're taking 25% off. So I'm actually going to pay for 75% of the item. 75% written as a decimal. You'd move the decimal point two places. It'd be 0.75. So I'm looking for the one that says 0.75 times X, which is why B is the correct answer. The right rectangular prism below has a square base. The following could be a shape of a cross section, except a circle. Remember that a cross section is when a plane would intersect this. If I cut this, took a slice out of it, is there any way that I slice it and I'd get a circle? No. no. I could slice it this way, get a rectangle. I could slice it this way, they said this was a square. I could slice it this way on a diagonal and get a parallelogram, but no matter what I do, I can't slice it and get a curved edge out of something that only has straight edges. Questions on five or six? Number seven. This is simply a definition. If you don't know what a cross-section is, you need to know that it means that you're taking a 3D shape and it's going to intersect a plane. Is a point a 3D shape? No. How about a triangle? No. Both of those are two-dimensional or no-dimensional. A plane and a cone. There's the plane. Is the cone 3D? Yes. yes. That's why B is the correct answer. A circle and a square, both 2D. A line and a point, not even two-dimensional. A plane is typically drawn by something that looks like a parallelogram, but it is infinite in length. It's also infinite in width. So it's, it would go on and on and on and forever. The wall is an example of a plane. The only thing is, is the wall would continue up through the ceiling all the way on up, and it would continue down through the floor. Okay, but not to be a plane. A plane is infinite in length and width. It would extend through the walls. 
It would keep on going, right? As straight as possible as it could go. That's what a plane is. Questions on seven. It is simply a definition. It's a memorization thing. On questions like eight and nine, I really recommend that if they give you something in this picture that you work the picture first. If this is 63 degrees, what's angle PVU? It's 63 degrees. Can you tell me why it's 63? Anne-Marie? Because they're vertical angles. Are there any other angles that I could find in this picture, in this case? No. None of them show a 90 degree marking. If I knew one of these two, I could find something else and add them up to 180, but I found everything that I could. What is the measure of angle PVU? We already put that in there. It's 63 degrees, and I could tell it was 63 degrees because they were vertical. It says, which relationship describes QVP? That's here and PVU. So, are they adjacent? They share a side, they share a vertex. They are adjacent. Can I tell for sure if they're complementary? No, I can't tell if they add up to equal 90 degrees. I can look at it and tell you for sure they're not supplementary because there's no way they make a straight line. Definitely not supplementary. Are they vertical? No, because if they were vertical, they would be opposite of each other. The correct answer is adjacent. Remember, adjacent means they share a side, they share a vertex. In other words, they're side by side, next to each other. Question. Would it be possible? Yes, it's possible. If I drew an angle this way, and I drew the other angle this way. Here's the vertex of one. Here's the vertex of the other. Do they have to share a vertex? No. That's why it's included in the definition. OK? Number 10. This is just simply a review question. Joey cut 10.5 foot length of rope into six pieces. If he had a 10.5 foot piece of rope and he cut it into six pieces, to find each length, you would simply divide. How many times does six go into 10? Once. Would I really need to go any further on this multiple choice question? No, because the only one that has a one in front of the decimal is B. And again, if I didn't have to go any further, I wouldn't. It's going to save you time. It's going to give you more time to work on the more complicated problems. Questions on number 10. Number 11. Maybe the hardest one that's up there. First off, they said a scale drawing of a regular uh, rectangular parking lot measures 6.8 by 12.3. So they said that you've got like a blueprint of it, and this is the measurement. The scale is 5 centimeters to 25 meters. If the scale is 5 centimeters to 25 meters, then we can find the actual length and width of the parking lot. This 6.8 centimeters is going to go in the numerator here. Remember, I got to compare centimeters to centimeters. Down here, it'll tell me how many meters it's going to be. Over here, this would be 12.3 centimeters, and it'll tell me how many meters that it's going to be. When I get done, they ask me to find what? The area. So 
So I know when I'm finding the area, I am going to take my length times my width. To solve this, we would cross multiply. 5 times x, 5x, 25 times 6.8, 170. What would I do to solve for x? Divide by 5. 34. When I go to do this one, I'm going to set it up the same way. 5 times x. 5x. 25 times 12.3. 307.5 and I would divide both sides by 5. X is equal to 61.5. Remember that these are both in meters so when I go to find my area it will be meters squared and I simply multiply 61.5 times 34. I get 2,091 meters squared for my end answer. In a scale drawing of a rectangle, how many proportions are you going to end up having to set up? Two. Two. Sometimes they just ask for the length and the width. Sometimes they ask for area, and you've got to remember when you find those two measurements to multiply the two together. For those of you that have your heads down, you might want to pay attention. Grades, I can tell you on my regular test, was not all that great. Michelle, let's pick your head up and pay attention. Okay. Number 12. They said every one unit was six feet. This is another one where you have to kind of count and figure out how many spaces there really were. One, two, three, four, five, six. This was six. I think when I counted across here, this was 20. If every one unit is six feet, then this represents, in the real world, 36 feet. 6 times the 6. This represents 120 feet. Okay. They want one unit to represent 4 yards. So I need to change 36 feet, first off, into what? I need to change it into yards. So I'm going to divide 36 by 3 so I know how many yards this 36 feet is. 3 goes into 36 12 times. This will be 12 yards here. This one would be 120 divided by 3 to give me my yards. And this would be 40 yards. They said each one unit is going to represent how many yards? Four. So if I had 12 yards and I divide it by four, it tells me it's going to be three units tall. There's the top of my rectangle. If I take my 40 yards, and divide it by 4 units, it is going to be 10 units long. There's the end of my rectangle. So when I sketch in my new rectangle, it looks like this. Any extra coke can? There's two. Yep. Everybody
everybody understand the conversion that had to be done here? I had to change units into feet. I had to change feet into yards. And then I had to change the yards back into units to redraw. Everybody good with number 12? What's your homework? Okay. On number 13 and 14, this goes back to what we learned about side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, and the other one was hypotenuse leg. They said, a triangle has angles measuring 30 degrees and 90 degrees and an included side of 6 centimeters. So if I had an angle of 30 degrees and 90 degrees and the included side, in other words, the side caught in between them was 6 centimeters, they're saying, is it going to be unique? Would there be more than one or would there be none? Remember, the only way that we could get none is if they gave me three lengths that two sides weren't bigger than the third side. This says angle, side, angle. That was in my list, so this will be what? Unique. On this one, they asked me to draw it. You will not have to draw one tomorrow but they might ask you another question. If I take a look at this, notice they said 40 and 50 degrees, and again, an included side. So if I drew an angle that was 40 degrees, I drew an angle that was 50 degrees, and this was two inches, this would still be angle, side, angle. Would this be unique? Yes or no? Is it in my list? Angle, side, angle. So it would therefore be unique. If we actually took the time to draw it, everybody should be then exactly the same. You will not have to draw one, but you may have another question that says, is it going to be unique? Would there be more than one or none? Remember, to be unique, it has to fit this list. Questions on 13 or 14? Number 15. Patricia bought a new swimsuit that cost $35. Sales tax is 7.5%. How much did Patricia pay, including sales tax? Two methods. I could take 35 times 0 0.075, changing this into a decimal. Because this says what? Percent. Percent means per hundred, which means I have to move it two places. 35 times 0 0.075 would give me 2.625. Remember with dollars and cents, this would have to round this up. I'm paying $2.63 in tax. They wanted to know what the overall cost was. So I'd have to add that 263 to the 35, $37.63. This is one of two methods. Since you normally pay 100% and sales tax is an increase, you're actually now paying 107.5% and you could have taken 35 
times 1.075, moving that decimal point two places again. When I do that, 35 times 1.075, it's going to give me 37.625. And again, this is going to make this round up to $37.63. Either method is okay, whichever you can do the best. Questions on 15. Number 16. Since this is asking you to describe the cross section of the cylinder, since this is parallel to the base, the shape of the cylinder is a circle. So this would simply be a circle. Is it possible for a cylinder to have a cross section the shape of a rectangle? If I drew cross section in here. This would be 90 degrees. That would be my rectangular shape. So the answer is yes. If we draw a vertical plane. In other words, if I sliced it vertically, it would give me a rectangular shape. Questions on 16 or 17. Is that on 16 or 17? Then it'll wait. Okay. Again, for problems like this, where you can see they're going to ask you more than one question, I recommend that you fill in the pieces that you can fill in. If this is 47, down here is also what? 47. I know that it's 47 degrees because those were vertical. Can I assume that that's 90 degrees? Yes or no? Did they put the little corner in there? I can't make that assumption. It can look like 90 degrees. But it could be 89.999. I can't assume that it's 90. So it says, what's the measure of angle EBD? I could still find that. This is what they're looking for. How would I find it? EBD. They're looking for this space right here. If I look at where this 47 is, how could I have found EBD? A hundred and eighty minus forty seven, because I know that a straight line is going to be a hundred and eighty degrees. Hundred and eighty minus forty seven, hundred and thirty three degrees. It says, what is the relationship between ABF and angle ABD. There are two things that you could put here. What's their relationship? They are supplementary because they make a straight line. That's really the one that mathematically does me the most good. They also happen to be adjacent because they share side AB and they share vertex B. Certainly either one of those would be okay. Which one's the better answer? Supplementary because mathematically it'll help me find 
a missing value. Questions on 18 or 19? Number 20. Again, a review question. It says Deborah has six and a half pounds of cherries. She wants to divide them into plastic bags that hold a quarter of a pound. They even tell you what you're doing. You're taking six and a half and you're dividing it by one fourth. I'm going to change this mixed number to an improper fraction. Two times six is twelve plus one is thirteen. What is the rule when we're dividing fractions? We keep we change division to, and we multiply by that reciprocal. We flip it over. I personally would cross cancel if I could. Will two go into four? How many times? So the two cancels out becomes a one. This becomes a two. Thirteen times two is twenty-six. Would I need the one in the denominator? No. That's why the answer for this one is. 26 bag. 